So how do you patch drywall? In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to patch small holes in drywall that have been created either by electrical boxes that used to be in the drywall but had to be moved, like in this case, or maybe you had a door handle that went into the drywall, whatever the case may be. In this video, you're gonna learn how to patch drywall, do it quickly, and make it super easy on yourself. So let's dive into it. The first thing that I like to do is check around all four sides and just see how this was installed. Now in this case, it's just a flap of paper, so I'm gonna cut this out. I'm not gonna sweat it. This is about three and seven eighths tall by, by about two inches. So all I'm gonna do is trace that on the back of the drywall. So this is the front of some purple board, scrap purple board I have. I'm just gonna trace the dimensions I told you on the back of this. So here you go, these are the rough measurements. This, these are my two inch marks right here, and then my three and seven eighths inch marks here. This is the rough outline of that outlet. It does not have to be perfect. I wanna stress that. You do need to leave about an inch to two inches on the edge here. So one to two inches on the top, one to two inches on the bottom, and the same thing on the sides. And here's why, because what we're gonna do, I don't even have a straight edge, I'm just using my joint compound knife. We're going to cut this out. So I just scored it. I wanna emphasize that. All you wanna do is score along the lines that you made. Okay, so we're gonna break it along those lines. And the first thing we're gonna do is peel off the big edges. This is what takes a little bit of just being patient with yourself. All right, there we go. Same thing on this side. Break off the smaller edges. So now we have, we've got paper. You've got your paper and you have your piece of drywall right here. The next step is to push this into the hole. Now you got a piece of drywall in the hole. What you want to do now is simply just trim your paper to size. Peel back the paper and apply joint compound on the edges. So you can apply joint compound underneath where the paper is located. I'm going to be using pre-mixed joint compound because I'm actually doing a different project today using this. This is plus three pre-mixed. This is setting type joint compound. This will set up super fast. So this is setting Easy Sand 45. It'll set up within uh, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the temperature and humidity. So if you want multiple coats, like you want this to be a one day project, I would say use setting type joint compound, but for today, I'm just using the, the uh, pre-mixed version. All right. You're not gonna need a ton of joint compound. You know, basically, I would almost even have applied this joint compound before I put this in there, but you know, right now, we're gonna do this. And you may even need a smaller knife. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go downstairs, or you know what? Here, here's what you can do. You can apply this to the back of the paper, even. And then you can smooth it into place. Now, in this case, it's, it's such a tight little area. You may not have the same predicament as me, uh, so you could place the joint compound on the wall, no problem. It also looks like somebody may have tried to patch something here once before. I don't know. But you definitely want this to get embedded as best you can. And it's just me, but I like starting in the center and smoothing my way down. So center, up, center, down. And really all that's doing is 
embedding the paper into the joint compound. I let this set up overnight because it's not setting type joint compound, it's pre-mixed. And what we're gonna do, again, is just use, is just use this plus three pre-mixed joint compound to fill this in. So really this might only take two coats, it just depends on what your preference is. There's a little bit of a texture here, so I may do three coats. But it's very simple, you just load up a six inch joint compound knife. And I'm just gonna start at the bottom and work my way to the top. Very shallow angle here. And as you can see, I covered up most of that patch, pretty much all of it. And the only thing that's kind of impeding my progress is the new wire. And uh, you, you definitely wanna try to get off any excess that's on your casing or your molding. And you can kind of tinker around with this if, you know, if, if I wanted to, I could probably get away with a very light coat here and be done with it and just sand it, sand it down, prime it and paint it and be done with it. You can see I have some imperfections here. There's something in the joint compound. Yeah, there's, sure enough, there's like a little piece of grit in there. You can remove that and just put on another coat. If you see some fish eyeing here where there are like little craters in the joint compound, you want to try to smooth that out as much as possible because you're not gonna be able to hide that using paint and primer. can barely see the piece of purple board that I cut out. That's how you patch drywall. Now in this case, I only put one coat of joint compound over top of the patch. You need to apply a texture coat. I have this video tutorial right here that you can watch. And that's pretty cool because that's a bigger drywall patch project, not just a little tiny one here. So if your patch project is like a three by three sheet piece of drywall up in your ceiling, this video tutorial will help you out. But that's it for today. Let me know what your questions are down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you out. If you have additional tips, put those down in the comments too. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.